2017. And uh, we're just going to show you uh, where we've got to, a work in progress on this um, big public art commission. So come on over and have a look. So these are the very, very organic part of the design, the beginning of the design. And these are our hops plants. Um, hops, because the MOJ originally used to be a pub called the Yorkshire Stingo. So um, we wanted to sort of use aspects like that. So, you know, metal done organically looks absolutely beautiful. So the things that, you know, I think are absolutely beautiful and amazing about these are, you've got, at the moment you can't see it because this is in its raw, metal in its raw state. So this twisted stainless steel bar here, that is going to be bright shiny stainless which is going to be massive contrast to the the hot so we're sort of toying with colors at the moment normally we don't really use that many colors but because where this is going in london we kind of thought we wanted to eject a bit of color so i've been looking at like um japanese woodblock print books and there's some amazing colors so not really garish but a really nice sort of an olivey green stroke mustardy yellow. Sounds a bit weird, but I think it's going to look amazing. Especially this is all going to be attached onto a core 10 rusted bit of steel. So it's going to have real, real atmosphere about it. And also, I love all the twisting vines, you know, going around it. It's just like a feast of organic metal work going on it's just beautiful and then you can see the hop dangling down here <laughs> that we've all had a few giggles about <laughs> Why won't you be laughing at? <laughs> oh just <laughs> well terry called them testicles but anyway <laughs> um no terry's just testicles. yeah they're terry's testicles so he, he, he enjoyed making making his testicles, anyway. <laughs> so they were a tool that was made to go into the Massey power hammer. So Rebecca Knott made the female version. She carved out in metal how it would look like. Then we got two hot pieces, blocks of metal, and put them either side and under the Massey it forges like a, a mould. So then when we get our balls, these moulds are used. So you just put the metal in, bang, it squashes. So that's how we made all these lovely, lovely hops. If you look at the leaves here, we've got, there's three different size leaves. They're all cut. They're marked with the um, fly press. This is a fly press right here. Not actually this one but you use the weight of the ball, which drives down this ram here, which you have tools in. So we used a fly press to do this middle mark here on the leaf. And then on the outside of the leaf, we did that with um, the fuller heads that go into a power hammer. And it's really nice because it, it pushes the metal out both ways, which makes you get this lovely ripply effect. So yeah, I mean, and look, if you look at the, the way with the leaves, you know, the, the beautiful feature about these leaves, they're really rough and ready. They're not, you know, we didn't want them like pristine done. I know in, in nature, it's all symmetry and everything, but we really wanted to capture the imagination. And uh, I mean, uh, you know, you can see the, where the leaves have been hammered under the power hammer on the edge. It's just, beautiful and the shape the shape in which they're done they're sort of you know this side to side and they come out so they've got their, their own rhythm going on and I, I just can imagine people walking past on their way to you know to work in London when we lived in there it becomes quite a mundane route but to walk past something like this you know I I just think it'll bring smile to people's face. They'll have that moment of just 
being in a hops field, you know? It's, uh, yeah, I, I do, I just, I love it. I just think it's, uh, oh, I just do. Then this whole project is a collaboration with Terry Clark and Terry's quite a stainless steel wizard. <laughs> and he's done these, well, he's done loads of the job, obviously, but he's done these amazing stainless steel twisted ropes. So it's as if, because hops, when you see them growing, they grow up on these ropes and stuff. So that's, that's what that detail is. And they're fixed to the floor. So these are the bottom trunks of our hop trees. And as you can see, they are pretty chunky. So they are forged from 60 mil round and um, using the crane and the furnace. So Terry and Simon and Jake heated these up and then using the press, they drop it in the press and the press would come back. So there's upset the metal back into itself to make it wider and look really chunky and also they textured it under the big hammer. But one of the beautiful things that happened about it was it created this lovely organic movement just from the press, pressing it up. And um, yeah, it just worked really nicely. So that's our trunk and then it gets tapered down more and more, the higher and higher it goes up. And you can see it just goes down to really thin, uh, up at the top, probably about 16 mil rounds. And it's all textured, so it looks beautiful. sort of dull it down a bit, put a graphite in, because graphite brings out all the hammer marks and, um, and a matte, so it's not so shiny, because I think shiny paint makes things look slightly plastic. We have always um, used a black graphite on our metal work, the reason being um, I love metal for metal, um, and I wanted to kind of keep it as true to metal as possible, but obviously metal work outdoors needs to be galvanized or zinc sprayed, so it needs some type of finish on. So that's why we've always used the matte graphite finish. But having been um, back at college part-time, a level three blacksmithing, our tutor was recently teaching us that metal work always used to be painted in color. It was never really in black. And then the rumor had it that it was when Queen Victoria's husband, Albert, died that she went into mourning and a lot of metalwork was painted black. That's only a rumor, is the fact that black paint is cheaper than color. So sadly, this is sort of stuck and follows suit. When you do look back at some of the metal work that used to be colour, it's beautiful and it really stands out from a building rather than sort of taking second place. So we decided that with this commission, we were going to add some colour, bring some happiness into people's everyday lives in London as they walk past. So this is just the undercoat at the moment. 
I kind of want to go for a bit of a, like a Japanese woodblock print sort of colour palette. So it's sort of earthy. It's not bright in your face. You know, it's got some sort of earth, some roots to it, but with colour. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this is going to turn out. Very pleased with it so far. Look, just check them out. <laughs> 